700 KBY on the Michael Duke Show. Common Sense Radio. There was an article in the uh, Alaska Dispatch News uh, yesterday written to Lynn Curry uh, that was written from a local woman who works for a highly profitable country uh, company. rather. She said, I work for the company run by a ruthless man who operates it like his per- uh, personal fiefdom. He has sexually harassed me for three months. If I try and sue, I'll not only lose my job, but won't be employable in Anchorage. I like my job, make a good salary, and there aren't many companies in Anchorage that employ those with my skill set. Uh, he said he began with suggestive comments. First, I thought I read too much into it. He even brushed his hands across my breast. I still thought I could handle the situation, but one day he grabbed me. What do you do in these situations? This is the questions that we ask, and so we brought in Dr. Tracy Weiland, normally our tech talk expert, talking about technology and careers, but this morning she's here to talk about it as a woman in the employment field who deals with these issues uh, with employees uh, on a you know all the time and, and has some great advice for us. Good morning, doctor. Oh, good morning. Hey, thanks for coming on and joining us. Now, I'm assuming this is obviously not the first time you've heard these kind of situations before where people, especially women, feel completely powerless in these kind of situations because they're between the proverbial rock and a hard place, right? Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, it happens frequently in the workforce, and um, more often than not, we don't hear about these things. So I think it is good that she wrote in and vocalized her concern. You know, and, and, I, and I'd be surprised. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. I said I think people would be surprised if they understood how frequently these things happen. I mean, I've I've worked in, in businesses and with businesses for years, and I'm surprised myself the number of times that I hear about it happening with companies. You would never think that this kind of would, thing would be a problem, but it continues to go on what can what can a woman do about this what steps should be taken uh, if something like this is going on in the workplace Sure. And um, so first, let me just define, you know, what sexual harassment is according to the law, that there's two kinds. Um, One is uh, creating a hostile environment, and that is, that's really adult bullying in the workplace. And that just not for women, but it's for anyone. If you're creating an environment where someone cannot function or feel productive, whether you're putting up lewd photos or making comments, um, you know, or making the environment that's uncomfortable for someone, you know, that's that's a form of harassment. Um, the second one is called uh, quid pro quo, and that's uh, really when you're putting someone in a position to do something in order to get a promotion, get a salary increase, or basically keep their job. So, you know, in exchange for a sexual act, you will remain employed. And so it sounds like hers is really over two of these areas, which is, you know, quite concerning. But it's, it's important to know that, you know, it, it, it is illegal uh, and there are, you know, protections for people. But before you take that, there are some steps that I would recommend. And what are, what are those steps that, uh, that folks need to be paying attention to in this regard? So, you know, number one is I think you, ha- you have to talk to the person directly and dismiss it. Let them know that this is uncomfortable, this is hostile, this is inappropriate. In more cases than not, what what we found is that that usually can stop it because people sometimes just are not aware. You know, they're not aware that they're doing something to offend you or they're not aware that, you know, you're uncomfortable with it. Um, so I always say, you know, approach them, don't hide. And I think a, a lot of times people want to hide um, because they feel awful. You know, they feel awful if someone someone is, you know, aggressive with them. Right. Um, second is, you know, are there other people who are experiencing the same thing? You know, there's safety in numbers. Um, the, the more people who, who are experiencing the same thing, like the Bill Cosby, right, people come out and come out and come out, um, then you have more of a case. Um, I think you have to inform your supervisor. In her case, um, her supervisor was the owner of the firm, so that makes it really challenging because you, you're, the path is go to your manager first. If you can't get cooperation there, go to your HR manager because they'll know the, leg- the legalities around it. And then if the HR isn't cooperative, you go to the senior manager. And her case is interesting because her supervisor, her HR, and her senior manager, right, it's a small firm, so it's CEO. Then there's an organization called the EEOC, Equal Opportunity um, it's a, it's a government organ, equal employment opportunity. And that is an outside organization which I would encourage women to contact if you actually are in a situation and you don't feel you have a comfortable inside support system. Right. Then you can go out to the EEOC 
and ask them what to do, and they will help you, you know, take the measures or the, have the conversations or intercede on your behalf. And I think that's important because there is an organization outside of the firm that you can get involved. Right. We're talking with Dr. Tracy Weiland about, you know, what is sexual harassment and how can it be handled in the workplace. Now, in this situation, she went to the HR manager. He didn't really have much that he could do for her. Then, of course, the CEO heard that she'd gone to the HR manager, so then she got called on the carpet about it again he warned her with a counter lawsuit if she did anything and i mean just this really i mean it looks like in each one of these steps you've outlined escalates the thing one you know one step further so it looks like she's down at the end of the chain she could contact the eeoc uh, and or file a lawsuit i mean is that kind of the the end result of of what the advice is at this point if you were talking to this woman what would you be saying to her well, I would I would definitely encourage her to t to contact the EEOC because they can interfere or intercede on her behalf, right, and sort of put this organization in their place in terms of legalities and what they're supposed to be doing and their appropriate responses, and then you know it, it, enforce them to really comply, and, and also to be able to help her get to a place where she can be productive. Um, for the women's, you know, I mean point of view is this doesn't sound like the ideal organization for for anyone right? right it sounds like you have poor management systems and you have no protocols here um, so I, I personally as a female would start to be looking around um, I don't believe that this is the only place in the world that she can work but I don't know her situation I you know right. I, I think there's opportunities there and that's also part of the process that she can work with the EEOC is okay you know what do I do I, I feel you know this is the only place that I can work can you help me find other opportunities or in or in some cases have the company find her something else Right. Well, and, Jen, and I think you're exactly right. Two, she said two women had had already left the company trying to uh, to get away from this guy. So apparently it's it's a known problem. But you you mentioned management, you know, lack of management, and this this really now comes down to an issue of people say, well, I'm a, I'm not a gal. This really doesn't concern me. What do, you know? What do I care? But if you're a manager, if you're an, even if you're not a manager, even if you're just a supervisor and you supervise other people, I mean, you know, what is what are my responsibilities if I'm a manager of people or a supervisor of some kind? What do I need to be doing to kind of be on the lookout for this and to make sure that this is not happening, you know, under my, uh, you know, under my areas of responsibility? So, you know, every organization is responsible to have a policy, and you'll see, you probably look around your environment somewhere in your office or you know, you're, you're building, there's probably a policy uh, because that's part of the law. And your HR, if, if you don't see it, your HR person will certainly have it. As a manager, you're responsible for the work environment of your employees, you know, right. so that they have the opportunity to succeed and be productive. And if an employee is feeling threatened by hostility in the office, um, you need to get involved. And if you don't know what to do, then, then you do go to HR because they should know what to do, right? They should be right. well versed in the, in the law. And discrimination is just not about gender. It's about race, color, sex, you know, religion, age, disability. There's, there's, you know, this covers a broad base. And as I call it, it's really just protecting against adult bullying in the workforce. Yeah, well, I got to tell you that this is, you know, this is a big deal in, in this day and age, and people need to be paying attention to it. And the contingent liability for a company, now in this case, this story we're talking about, it's the CEO and owner of the company. So, I mean, he's opening his own sales up to liability. But if you're the owner of a company and you have an employee underneath you that's doing this, huge contingent liability on your on your part. You definitely need to be paying attention to what's going on with this. Uh, Dr. Wild, if they you have more stuff like this up on your website, if folks want to find out more, we just go out to your website and check it out? Uh, yes, it's TracyWeiland.com, and my Twitter is at TracyWeiland, T-R-A-C-E-Y-W-I-L-E-N. And I look forward to our Tech Talk because we can talk about some technology strategies that women can do since this is Women's Month because there's so much more that we can record yeah. right, and document. Right. So, you know, that can really put people in a tough position uh, thinking that nobody sees it and nobody knows. Well, and so Alaska is a one-party state, so only one person, one party has to be aware of the recording. If he gets, you know, if she gets him on that, that that'll be pretty much it right there. So, I mean, that, that could solve the whole situation. So, um, Dr. Tracy Wild. And I appreciate you coming on. We will be talking to you tomorrow with Tech Talk. Appreciate you uh, joining us on this special segment to talk about this. Thank you very much. 